Margaret Cho is a trailblazer in the world of stand-up comedy and a bold, brash, and unapologetic voice on political and social matters. She's now celebrating 40 years of making people laugh and pay attention to the issues of the day. I met up with her recently at the Warner Theater in Washington, D.C. for our arts and culture series, Canvas. Live and Livid is the name of Margaret Cho's big first tour since the pandemic. So you take your dog everywhere, huh? Yeah, she's really special. She's and her really loyal special. Chihuahua mix rescue dog, Lucia, is along for the ride. At 54 and performing professionally since 16, Cho has woven comedy through her stand-up, acting, and even her LGBTQ activism. We need to recognize that a government that would deny a gay man the right to bridal registry is a fascist state. From stand-up specials like Notorious CHO in 2002. Her name is To Psycho in 2015. To starring in the groundbreaking 90s TV comedy All American Girl, inspired by her stand-up routines about the culture clashes between her traditional Korean mother and herself, a fully Americanized daughter. Look, he's a doctor and from a good traditional family. Wow, and check out that frequent flyer mileage. <laughs> to appearances such as her Emmy-nominated recurring role in 30 Rock, playing Kim Jong-il. Hasta la vista, baby. Finally, my girls have arrived! <laughs> and recently, a Hulu film, Fire Island, with Saturday Night Live's Bowen Yang. Cho knew from an early age growing up in San Francisco, comedy was her calling. I just love the art form, and it was just a recognition more than anything that it was uh, what I would grow up to be. I think a lot of people maybe have those feelings, maybe when they were kind of playing, they, like as a kid, you're like, oh, I want to be a fire fireman, <laughs> I want to be a lawyer. I think that I had those kinds of really childhood aspirations to be a comedian, mm -hmm. but it was a very um, visceral knowledge of this is my job, oddly, because I was not a class clown. Really? Yeah. So, so who were your early influences then? Who were you looking to to say, I could do that, I want to do that? Joan Rivers, ultimately, um, because she was so uh, incredibly elegant, but also crass. She was finding a way to be crass, which is pretty incredible. Uh, in the 70s for women and in comedy and for television the way it was. She was one of your mentors and I, I saw where you said that some of the advice that she once gave you was, we are the type of girls who don't find our place when young. The funny ones, the odd ones, the weirdos, we are seen a little later. She was very right about how we become more and more visible the older we get. And she would say to me, you know, we're like the girls that were ugly in high school. And I'm like, you know, watch your mouth. <laughs> watch your mouth. You know, it's a funny thing of like, when you realize that we actually grow in value as we age. And it's a powerful thought, you know, that we can actually really embrace that power. So I, I think that she was very right about that. Do you view your stand-up act as being part of your activism? Yes, my stand-up comedy is uh, the main uh, channel for my activism. It's the way that I am an activist. If you go back to Bob Hope, that's all he was doing, was lending his sense of humor to the cause. In fact, when I was a boy, I had such a high voice, the teacher made me sit with the girls. <laughs> Although my cause is somewhat different, but actually not really that different. It's about uh, boosting morale. It's about um, sort of a call to action and call for unity for Americans. To be clear, the language Cho uses is nothing like Bob Hope. But sometimes you'll see like a really beautiful Asian woman and she's with the most f***ed up face, broke down, busted white man. And I'm just like, are your eyes that small? Crass and vulgar are some of the words used to describe her humor. I asked her about that approach. I think like what I've been trying to do is hit sort of both high and then low. So like high-minded is like looking towards fighting for equality, fighting for rights for the queer community, fighting for trans lives, fighting for drag, fighting for all of these things in a very noble effort, but then undercutting it with the most crass, explicit, foul joke that you can have that center 
a very highly minded idea <laughs> to the, my feeling like if like I'm trying to make this um, it's like a Sunday or something like you want the cherry on top to be a, a really noble effort but underneath it's just filth. And when you live together sex takes on a whole new dimension. I feel like a prostitute that works for really low rates. You have been really open about your past addiction, your past mental health issues. How does that journey show up in your work? Well, I think it's important to talk about mental health as a, a subject matter because it's inherently really funny because it's like really like full of mystery and ter terrifying. In what ways? Well, it's like, to me, uh, the closer that we are to death, the more that we can laugh in the face of that, the more strength that we have to carry on living. Hmm. And so the humor is really the uh, coping mechanism of the spirit. I never saw Asian people on television or in movies, so my dreams were somewhat limited. I would dream, maybe someday, I could be an extra on MASH. When you were a child and you knew that this was the life that you wanted for yourself, did you ever allow yourself to think that it would be this big? No, I never knew what it would be. I never thought about what my career would look like just because I didn't have any examples to draw from. But Dancing with the Stars is old people's jam. Her mom is often a foil for Cho's humor and a butt of her jokes, too. Every taping, she would sit in the front row of the tapings, and I could not even look at her because she would emit this low pitch moan that only I could hear. <laughs> you know, she's 88 now, and so this is a very, like, special time. You know, really usually treasure everything that she says. So that's a really big part of my work is uh, talking about her and then everybody really loves like just to hear her voice through that. Um, you know, whether that's like, because she, she thinks my haircut's, the haircut's a bit gay. <laughs> so she thinks this haircut is the most gay that my hair's been, which is right. But that, that uh, kind of voice is like, I think the thing that people are familiar with because it's sort of like talking about um, the immigrant experience that is also when it, when it becomes very right on. You've been doing this, as you mentioned, for 40 years. What's your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment is, a, is I think, uh, inspiring comedians like Joel Kim Booster and Bowen and Yang to further greatness, you know, that they were able to see me and recognize that this is what they wanted to do. Um, so, yes, the reason that... Uh, Ali Wong exists, the reason that Aquafina is out there. All of these comedians, I think, were inspired by me, and that's my greatest achievement.